Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about using Infoblox DDI with Ansible Tower. So if you're not familiar with Infoblox DDI, it is, let's see, DHCP, DNS, and IPAM. So it's a very uh, large enterprise ready system. I see a lot of folks using it. It's pretty easy to use. I like the interface and it's very easy to automate it against. So let's take a look. First, I have my uh, grid master or rather grid manager which um, manages all of my infrastructure so they are kind enough to give you a I think it's a 60 day a 60 day trial copy that you can just keep turning back on so it's great for lab use um, in here I want to pop into data management I've got two subnets in here 10 1 12 and 192.168.100 if I go over to say DNS It'll actually show me my zone. So I've got gregshole.com, Taco Tuesday, and then the reverse for those uh, zones as well. They're actually pretty easy to manage and create. So taking a look, I've got a couple of playbooks in here. One of them is the DDI lab build. So whenever I have this thing stood up, you know, just plain, I've got an IP address on it, the DDI server, and I want to connect to it. I can use this to actually build it out. So take a look right here in this VAR section. You're going to see this every time I utilize the NIOS system, which is the uh, module sets that uh, DDI uses to actually configure it. So this uh, NIOS provider, it's used by every um, lookup plugin and by every module that's actually going to utilize it. So it really specifies the host DNS name or IP address that you're going to connect to the DDI server with, username and password. In this case, well in pretty much every case I ever do this sort of thing with, I use a custom credential from within Tower to pass this over at runtime. So you're just going to see variables in here. But really to set up my uh, DDI instance, it's really just two things. Uh, in OS zone, you're going to see I'm going to use the exact same module for both of these. Uh, by default, it's going to be doing a forward zone. So I'm just looping through and I'm creating Greg Soul and Taco Tuesday. It's gonna loop through those items and make sure they're present. Very simple. Uh, on the second one, I'm doing the same thing, only I'm specifying the zone format to be IPv4. That way it does the reverse lookup. So I can have pointer entries in there as well. Just gonna loop through and create those two. So from scratch, from my demo environment, that's really it. I just run this one playbook and I'm done. So very simple. Now, one of the powerful um, things about um, DDI, you know, kind of the info block system itself, is this add next, which I think is really cool. So the idea here is, um, again, it's all the same setup stuff. I've got a couple of variables here. I've got a host name that I want to add in, and I've got a subnet range, right? So this is the range of IP addresses I want to pull from. What I can do is I can perform some simple lookups and actually query it and say, hey, give me the next available IP address in this range. So I'm going to show running that really quick. I'm going to search in my templates for all my DDIs. I'm going to run the uh, add next one here. So while that's running, I'll pop back over and take a look at the playbook itself. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to do a lookup for that host name. Does it already exist in the grid manager, right, in DDI? Does it exist? If it does, it's just going to post a debug message that says, hey, it exists, and it stops right there. If it doesn't exist, however, it's going to hit this code block. So it's going to send a message that says it doesn't exist, let's create it, and it will use the NOS host record module. And right here, it's doing a lookup via the NOS next IP lookup plugin. You give it the subnet range, which we're specifying right there, and it will just return whatever the next available one is, create a record for it. Very simple. So in my playbook, I've got it set to host one and pulling from the 192.168.100. If I pop back over to my tower, it should have completed. So it said, yep, doesn't exist. I can click on the output and here's the host name that it utilized. Here's the subnet range. It looks like 100.2 was available. So let me pop back over to my grid manager. I like doing all this from the IPAM. So I'm gonna pop in here. I'm gonna take a look at the list. And I should see host1 as dot two right there. So the interesting thing about a host entry is whenever you add it as a host, it's going to add it into the IPAM. It's also going to add it in the DNS server. So it should be gregsoul.com and host1 right there. And it's got its IP address. 
let's see if I pop back over to default zone I look into 192168 it should also have a reverse record so host one as dot two right so that's the cool thing about a host record whenever you add that in adds all three of those you don't have to add them individual now you could add them individually but why would you when this is so much more efficient so I can actually add those and I can do that sort of manually in that little um, small process there but how would I do this from something functional in my environment so I've also got a playbook in here or rather a uh, job template I should say that I'm gonna go DDI again for filtering because I've got a lot of stuff in here I've got uh, using VMware to create a uh, virtual machine so it's based off of um, one I did for ServiceNow so it's kind of a self-service deploy you get to choose the template type that it's going to clone it from so we'll make this one self-service deploy number one I'm going to leave all of these default if you look right here the IP address I've got it set for DDI that's the default so I can manually specify an IP address and it'll assign that IP or if I let it do DDI it'll do an automatic lookup and apply that IP address so it's firing off I'm gonna come in here to my um, vSphere environment and you can see here it is it's cloning the template right now so it should have went to my DDI done the lookup and then started the uh, yep here's the VM DDI so this was the next top IP that it pulled or rather the next available IP that it pulled 100.5 as soon as it completes it's actually going to register that as a host in the grid manager as well so through the uh, magic of editing I'll be back just in a moment when this completes now I'm going to take a look at the playbook really quick so here at the top you see uh, it sets up the vCenter information um, the required settings for the template of course all of that's going to get passed in at runtime from that survey so that's all going to get overwritten uh, at the top it's going to try and check to the IP address so first thing it does is it checks to see if it is not DDI if it's not it'll go ahead and statically assign the IP address specified if it is however DDI then it's going to run this code block down here so variable section sets up the NOIS uh, or rather NIOS provider which is injected at runtime via the custom credential very first thing it does is it's going to uh, look up uh, for a next top IP address in that subnet and save it to the variable name VM IP DDI then it's going to check to see if uh, there's a host entry already for the host name that was specified if there is it's going to remove it then it's going to clone the machine and when it does it's going to inject that IP address that we just got from DDI VM IP DDI and then at the very end it's going to add it in as a host record so it should have completed properly you can see all the information there that was printed out I'm going to pop into the grid manager and let's take a look to see if it got in there. Yes, it did. SS deploy one, craigsall.com. I look over at my vCenter. I see SS deploy one is up and online and it's got that new IP address in the right subnet. So as you can see, it takes a lot of that manual processing out. So whenever I tell it to fire up a VM, I basically specify all the parameters in that initial go and then it's going to take care of all of my DNS my IPAM my reverse records all of that interstitial stuff is taken care of for me it makes it really easy so I'm curious how you guys can see this being utilized in your infrastructure how you would change things uh, let me know in a comment and uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time